best-selling author, keynote speaker, corporate trainer, and former director and 20-year veteran of the Procter & Gamble Company. Well, speaking of resources, the author of a new book has compiled some resources to help you grow your company and your company's leadership. Most of the cognitive science research that's been done in the last two decades tells us something that we really never knew before, that human beings make subconscious, emotional, often irrational decisions in one place in their brain, and then they justify that decision logically and rationally in another place in their brain after the fact. So we think we've made these wonderful rational decisions, but the truth is our brain decided three-tenths of a second earlier for emotional subconscious reasons. Okay? So, if you actually want to influence people's decisions, opinions, and behavior, in other words, leadership, it turns out you need to influence them emotionally. And facts and data and arguments and logic are not that good at influencing people emotionally. Stories are fabulous at it. Telling people a story and the conclusion is, if you want to be successful, get lucky, that's, a, <laughs> that's not very helpful. So, experience is always the best teacher, but story is a close second, and everything else is a distant third. And of course, I have to start by telling you a story. I finished the whole thing, and he didn't turn on one time to look at my slides. And on reflection later, it occurred to me, it wasn't that he was disinterested. Okay? He was engaged the whole time looking me right in the eyes. He didn't look because he knew something that I didn't know until that day. And that is that if I've got anything important to say, I'm going to say it. He was looking at that meeting as an opportunity to engage someone in dialogue, somebody like me. And I blew it because I was trying to present to him. What he wanted to do was to talk to somebody and have them tell him a story. Every one of you in this room knows, right now, sitting where you are, that by this time tomorrow, none of you are going to remember this list of six things, right? <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm not going to be insulted. In fact, you know, I've given this lecture a hundred times, and every time I have to turn around and look at the list of six things, because it's just a list of six things. But all of you sitting here right now know that by this time tomorrow, all of you will remember most of the details of the jury table story. And you know, sitting where you are right now, that next week and next month, and even a year from now, most of you in this room will be able to tell that story and get most of the facts right. Stories inspire. Slides don't. Right? When's the last time you heard somebody say, wow, you'll never believe the PowerPoint presentation I just saw? <laughs> Nobody says that. But they do say that about a good story. If you're trying to decide what your five-year strategy is going to be in your, your department or your division, you don't need a good story. You need a good strategist to help you think of what those strategies are going to be. But once you've decided what your five-year strategy is going to be, and you need the 167,000 employees at KP to line up behind that and, and go get it, now you need a good story. When you're trying to set a vision for the future, or when you're trying to lead change in your organization, or get people to be more creative, or to collaborate better, or to teach somebody a lesson. But the most frequent use of storytelling is to influence people. And whether you call that making a recommendation that sticks, or just influencing people, or you call it sales even, you know, that storytelling is phenomenal at doing that. And I would tell you there are three things that make a great story great. One is a hero we care about. Two is a villain we're afraid of, and three is an epic battle between them. Stories have a particular structure. Right? You can't just open up your mouth and start talking and expect it to be a great story. And unfortunately, that's what most of us do. Right? <laughs> now you're ready to tell a story.